Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I don't know if you can tell by this, but you probably could tell by the thumbnail that this is a three-toed sloth. The thumbnail shows a brown one, which is what we're going to make today. This was made with completely different colors because that was the request from my daughter. So we'll go over the colors in case you like what you see. Um, this here, all this multicolored stuff is Craftsmart Value Multi. The color is Orchid Mist. And that's for this, these, all the claws. This raspberry color is a Craftsmart value. That's the colored name is raspberry. And then this here, which I find is a little, was a little too thin for me. And uh, the raspberry is kind of Craftsmart's bit of a thicker yarn. This I found was, it's loops and threads impeccable and it's just Aran. And I found it was really thin to use with this. I mean, it, it worked out fine because their faces are kind of flat, but I don't know. And then these are 16 millimeter eyes I had to order because I didn't have 16 millimeter eyes. They're ginormous. So, and they are glued, hot glued into place because there's no way of putting this all together without having to glue some stuff down. So, um, and then this black just for the thing. And now we'll go over the colors that I'm going to use in today's video. So first we're going to start with this off-white color. And that's going to be for the face. Now you're not going to be able to find this because this came in a bag. This is really old stuff from Sears. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to find it. But it is just a worsted weight. It's 100% acrylic. And it's just an off-white color. And then the brown that I'm going to use for the body is this Taupe Heather. And it's by Bernat Premium. And then this, I have no idea what it is. I bought this a few years ago. I used it in a project that I did on my channel. And for some reason, there's no tag inside this cake. It doesn't come in a cake. It comes in a roll. And I bought it from Michael's. I can tell you that much. And it's just this variegated... That's what I'm going to use for the claws and for his eye patches. I'm using a five millimeter for this project because I'm using, um, well, my one is worsted and this other craft smart is a little bit on the thicker side. So let's start with the head and we're going to start with the dark color. So whatever your body color is, that's what we're going to start with. And then we move on to the light Aaron color as we build because we wanted the back of the head to look pretty so that's what why we we start that the head is sewn to the body it's not built on so you're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets i'm going to turn my light up a titch because i'm using brown if you don't know how to do a magic ring or you don't like it then just do a chain two and put six single crochets into that first stitch. It'll be exactly the same. So your first row is going to be two single crochets in each stitch for a total of 12 stitches. So after your first stitch, that's where the marker goes in. And then stitch number two can follow suit. Two single crochets in each stitch around will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 18 stitches. That's number one. 
and then we jump right into our increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase of so two single crochets in the same space. And repeat for a total of 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches. That's number one with the marker. That's three single crochets and then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So, your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 42 stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 48 stitches. That's number one. That's six single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. We're going to stop increasing soon. This will bring it up to 54 stitches. So your next round is going to be eight single crochets and an increase. And that's as high as we're going. This will bring into 60 stitches.
so this is what you should have. I got small hands, but that's what you should have. <clears throat> so for the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 60 stitches, and then we're going to switch to Aran, or whatever color you're using, and then we're going to do another four rows. So, um, but first I just want you to do the four rows, and I'll meet you back to change color. So this is the end of my four rows. I'm going to pull up this stitch and I'm going to finish it with my off-white Erin, if I can get it out. So I'm going to change to my Erin color. We are not going back to the brown for his face, so with your new color, you're going to do four rows, so just keep going doing what you were doing before of one single crochet in each stitch. So that's my four rows. So we're going to start to decrease now. We're going to start with a eight single crochet decrease. So that's number one. That's eight single crochet, and then I'm going to do invisible decreases. So I'm going to just pop into my front loop of my first stitch, pop over to my second loop, front loop of my second stitch. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through those two, yarn over, and finish the stitch. It leaves the back loops back here behind so that you don't see as much gapping. But you can choose to do whatever decrease you want to do. Either way, 8 single crochet decrease all the way around will give you 54 stitches. So your next round is going to be 7 single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 48 stitches. We're just doing exactly what we did here. We're just doing it backwards. That's number 1. That's my 7 single crochets and then my decrease. repeat. Okay, your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 42 stitches. So this is what you should have. We can start stuffing this at any point. We only got a few more rows to go and then we're going to close it up.
So your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and those will bring you down to 30 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease, and those will bring you down to 24 stitches. Another reason that I prefer the invisible decrease over the regular one is when you do decrease after decrease after decrease, it tends to show a little bit more than the other stuff, the invisible one. I mean, you can still see it. It's not completely invisible, but... It certainly would look better. So that's three single crochets, number one being your marker, and then your decrease. All the way around. So your last round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and then we cinch the rest of it closed. There we go. So you can fasten off. You just need a cinching tail we need to finish filling this so I don't want to overstuff it too much because his even though he has a nice round head <laughs> his face is kind of flat I don't know if you've noticed that. So I want to round out the back of his head, but as far as the front, I don't want to overfill it because it is kind of flattish. So we're going to cinch this closed. We're going to use our front loops, so we're going to go in the front loop and out the next front loop, just like that, all the way around. So if you're pulling this and it feels like it's going to be wrinkly, then I would put more yarn in it, but I am pulling mine. And then I'm going to weave in and out around the circle. Just so it looks better. We 
because this is still his face. <laughs> Even though I do the nose kind of over top of this, we still want it to look decently good. So, you can close it up any way you want. If you don't like what I'm doing, then you can do it a different way. So this is what you should have. And that's the beginning of his head. So of course the jog part, that'll get sewn to the body and you'll never see that. So um, let's just finish the face. So the next thing we're, we're gonna do is the eye patches. So you're gonna need 16 mil eyes and then I'm using this for my patches. So we're going to make a chain 11 to start that's chain 11 and I'm gonna do nine single crochets so you only have 10 working stitches because the 11th one is still on your hook so you're going to go all the way back up till you have one stitch left. So that's my nine. I've got one stitch left and I'm going to put five single crochets in that last stitch. So it wants to curve around and I want you to follow that curve. Pull your slip knot closed again and do nine single crochets back down. Just make sure you're getting in right next to your slip knot. So nine takes you right back down to the tippy top. I'm weaving in my tail at the back. And nine is kind of right at the top. So that's what you should have. I'm gonna cut this tail off because I weaved it in for a bit. So I'm going to use a stitch marker just so you can follow along better. I know it's hard to see because of the variegation, so a stitch marker in this case might be ideal. So in this first stitch, I want you to put two single crochets, but after the first one, I want you to put a marker on that. Now put stitch number two in that same space. And now I want you to do nine single crochets. So we should be back to where we go around. And in these next three stitches, I want you to put two single crochets in each of them. Now we're around to the other side again where I want you to do nine single crochets.
should have one stitch left and I want you to put two single crochets in that last space. Your last round, we're going to start off the same. I want you to put two single crochets in this first stitch, but after your first stitch, that's when the marker, marker goes on. So two single crochets in this first space, two single crochets in this second space. And now I want you to do 10 single crochets across. That is my 10 single crochets. So now we're back at the top again. And over these next four stitches, I want you to put two single crochets in each stitch. And now I want you to do 10 single crochets back to the, you have two stitches left. That's my 10 single crochets. I have two stitches left and I'm going to put two single crochets in each of them. And that is it. Go into your next stitch and fasten off. So you need a sewing tail because we're going to have to sew this to the, to the head. So I'll put the pattern on the screen and you can go ahead and uh, make your second one. So I've got my second one done. I just need to figure out where I'm pinning this. I've got to glue the eye in. So if you have a hot glue gun, you can get that all warmed up. Turn it on. It's so hard to tell. These do go down. They point down, not up. So pretend your middle is your nose because that's exactly where we're putting it. We're gonna do the nose over this which isn't as easy as it sounds. <laughs> and then point these down. So they should come down to this first brown, should come down to this first brown row. Yeah, both mine do. So I think that's good. So now the only, <laughs> the only thing we have to try to do, I don't know why I got my box out for these eyes is find a hole to put these in. So obviously the most noticeable hole. Is uh, here. The problem is the hole in the actual head 
needs to be manipulated a little bit. These are big eyes. They're 16 mil. So, finding the hole here is easy on the patches, but finding where you're putting it in the doll itself, they do need to be twisted in a little bit, but we're going to hot glue them, but that's the way it's going to look. And then the nose and the little mouth go here. So, I just squeeze a big, big glob so that you can still uh, do the back. So it'll squish out around the back of this eye. So I'm just gonna press as hard as I can. I think the, the glue gun is the best way to, to hold it because regular glue is not gonna hold these big eyes. You don't want them popping out if this is going to a child. So I think mine are in there pretty good. I'm going to shut off my glue gun and get it out of the way. So now we can glue on, or sew on, our eye patches. So I got all my patches all sewn on. All my patches, my two patches. So I've met up at the back with my, with my strands. So I'm just going to do a double knot. Just cutting this one off just a bit because I don't need that much to weave. There we go. So we just need to get ourselves some black and uh, do this nose and mouth and then we can move on. So I've got some black. It's just a red heart um, super saver. And you're going to need a bunch. By a bunch, I don't know what I mean. I have no measurement, just a bunch. So, this is what we're doing. So, this is just all a repeat loop. Loop, loop, loop. And then we do this. So, a bunch. So, it doesn't really matter where you come in. It just matters where you pop out. And I'm just going to try to cover this um, magic ring. But I want to come out as close to the eye as, as I can. I probably have too much. Leave, leave that hanging. So we're just going to loop. So you just need to find... We're going to start off wide, and then we're going to go. When you come out, try to come out on the side that you're heading. So I'm heading down this way to go into a point, so I want to come out on the side of that. It works out way better that way. So if you're okay with that, just keep using the same holes and keep repeating the same thing. And just use your hand to kind of push down the uh, strands. But try to stay on the side that you're working.
So once I got it established, I go back over and go back up and fix anything that I feel needs to be fixed, which is a few things because my nose looks crooked a little bit. Once you're satisfied with your nose, I'm going to go down through the top, right underneath everything, and I'm going to pop out mid, if I can get in there. It's super duper tight, but in the middle of my nose. Just watch how tight you pull on this particular piece. You don't want to pull too tight on that. And then we can put our mouth in. And then we pop around like that. So just don't pull too hard. And then come back around. Pop out wherever you want. And that is your little mouth, your little smiley mouth. So we're going to start this body and so get your just brown. The body is only one color. So whatever color you're using, we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round, this is amigurumi, so no slip stitching. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So after your first stitch, that's where your marker is going to go. And then stitch number two can go in that same space. Two single crochets in each stitch around will give you a total of 12 stitches. Our next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. <laughs> and get through. That's number one. Your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And this will give you a total of 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's number one with your marker. That's number two. Then this stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 30 stitches. That's number one. 
that's three single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 36 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 42 stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase, and this brings you up to 48 stitches. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. We're almost done increasing. <laughs> this will bring it up to 54 stitches. So your very last increase round is going to be eight single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 60 stitches and that's where we're going to stop. So this is what you should have. It's pretty big. So for the next eight rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 60 stitches. And then we come back and we start to decrease. Easy peasy. So that's my eight rows. That's what you should have. So we're going to start to decrease now. There's no need to um, to start stuffing it. It's just going to be hard to hold. So uh, your next round is round 18, and you're going to do an eight single crochet decrease. Just number one. That's eight single crochets. And then I'm doing invisible decreases. So front loop, the second front loop, yarn over, pull through those two, yarn over, finish the stitch. You can do whatever decrease you want to do.
So you should have 54 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 54 stitches. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 48 stitches. So you should have 48 stitches for the next two rows. I want you to do one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 42 stitches. So you should have 42 stitches. For the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my two rows. Um, I'm going to start stuffing mine because we're just going to continue to um, decrease. Alrighty. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 36 stitches. So, you should have 36 stitches. For the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So, your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 30 stitches. So I should have 30 stitches for the next two rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So your next and last decrease is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This is your last one. So bring it down to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches.
For the next three rows, I'd want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. There we go. Should look like a little bomb when we're going to finish. <laughs> we're going to finish stuffing this. So that's it. You can um, fasten off. Now, you're going to need a sewing tail. First, we're going to cinch this closed. And you're going to need a sewing tail to sew the head to the body. I use a matcher stitch when I do stuff like that because it is such a great hold and you won't have a wobbly head. I go around twice, but let's finish filling this and then we can cinch it closed. You want to make sure that this is really, really stuffed up to the very, very tippy top. So I'm all done stuffing mine right to the very tippy, tippy top. Very tippy top and even then some. So we're going to cinch. I call this a large hole cinch and they don't necessarily always look bad and they in my opinion look better than a smaller one you're gonna go in the front loop and out the next front loop so in and out all the way around you can skip one if you want it doesn't make that big of an impact and it gets you to where you want to be a lot faster it'll still cinch the same So I'm all the way around and I'm going to pull. Don't worry about what this is going to look like because you're going to have a head sewn on up here. So I am just weaving around the cinch hole. So. Mine's all cinched up. Now my top, because it wasn't like hugely full, I got a few wrinkles. I don't really care. My head's going to be sitting on this. So I'm going to make my knots. I'm only doing it one way. So I'm going to pop out here to where I'm going to be sewing. And then this is what you should have. That's the shape. So then our head gets sewn on like that. So I know right now you're going, why does the body look so short? A sloth has long legs and long arms. So it will look different after. <laughs> it won't look so stupid. Right now it does look stupid. So I'm gonna turn my head around because I wanna start kind of at the back here. So I do a mattress stitch to sew this on. I need something to, let's do that. So I'm gonna grab a couple of pieces from the head, a bar, not a piece, like a post. That's what I'm grabbing see if I can zoom in a little bit more so I'm grabbing a post from the head I'm already in my body so I'm gonna move over and pick up this next post from the body now you don't have to pull it tight right away as long as you just stay in the same row you should be able to get a couple of shoelaces as I call them in there so just stay to the same row and put a few stitches in to hold this steady that's the thing about the mattress stitch it can be so easy and I suck at sewing so I 
like it. So you see how I got all my shoelaces? That's just what I call them. That's not the technical term. So I'm just going to keep going down the same row, picking up my posts until I think I have enough that I might be a little bit stable. And then I pull and it gathers that all up nice and tight. So now I can continue. Now I go around twice. Right now I'm just trying to attach it and then when I go around a second time I'm trying to secure it. And fix whatever I've done. Like if my, my head is you know, twisted in a way I don't like or whatever. I can pull down further on one side and it's a very good stitch for just about any project you do really. There we go. It's all attached so it's still wobbly because we're just attaching it. So now when I go around a second time, I'm going to go higher on the head and lower on the body and that's going to really pull it down nice and secure it and it shouldn't be wobbly at all. So if you've managed to get your head maybe cocked to one side, then just go lower on this side and it should pull it over. Uh, mine's fine. I don't mind mine. So I'm just going to go one row up and one row down from where I was before. And I'm going to go around again. So I'm trying to stay low in this face part because I don't want the face to be looking down. But I still need to secure it. So. so, now it doesn't wobble at all. That's my guy. He's so super cute. Okay, so now I want to start with the claws because we have to make 12 of them. <laughs> so, um, none of these are stuffed. Let me show you my other guy here. So none of these are stuffed. There's nothing in them. Um, but we have to make 12 of them because he has four limbs. So three on each, three toed sloth. So three on each. I did 11 so I can show you one more. They all get whip stitched shut at the top. So this is this is what I mean by the homework you're going to have. Um, so I'm going to do that with you so that at any time you're sitting on the couch in front of the TV, you can just kind of whip off these. Um, they're easy. There's really no pattern to them. Um, so it's not like you're going to need to watch the video to make them. So, um, so we'll do that now so that at any time, like I said, you can just kind of do that for homework. So get whatever you're using for your claws and you're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets or a chain two and put everything into the first stitch. And for the next 10 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches.
So that's my six to count, which means that's my that's my ten rows. So I'm gonna go in and fasten off. With sewing tail, probably not as long as the sewing tails you saw me there with, but <laughs> I always I always have too much. It's better to have too much than not enough. So you could probably stick your clover hook down in in there to you know straighten this out. I just use my fingers. I actually use it, my stylus pen is what I use when I'm upstairs sitting in front of the boob tube. Just doing these, I'll use my end of my stylus, but. And then we whip stitch the top shut, no stuffing. Only takes about three stitches. Oops. There we go. So you got to make 12 of these all together. So uh, we're going to leave this for now. And uh, if you want, if you need to come back to this because you can't remember what you have to do, then um, in the description box below you'll see it say claws. Just give a click on that number and it'll zoom you right over to this part of the video. So we're set that aside, but that's going to be your homework. So let's do the arms. So the arms and legs are just all brown or whatever color you're using for your sloth. There's uh, no other colors associated. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So that's number one with your marker. The second stitch then goes into that same space and each space around gets two single crochets for a total of 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 30 stitches, and that's as far as we're going. So you should have 30 stitches for the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So that's my four rows. We're going to start decreasing now, and I want you to do a three single crochet decrease. Your 
Next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This will bring it down to 18 stitches. So we can start stuffing this and for the next six rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches so you're going to have to kind of stuff as you go so this is the part all the claws are getting sewn to so just make sure it's well packed down not well stuffed well packed you don't want to see your stuffing through the stitches So, for the next six rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So this is my sixth row. I'm going to stuff this guy. We're going to keep decreasing and adding a number of rows. So um, just be careful how big you stuff this part. This is supposed to be bulgy. And then this part is the arm. So the claws will sit grab one here on the bulgy part like that so just watch I just hit my light just watch that you don't overstuff this area so your next decrease is gonna seem weird <laughs> but I just wanted a small decrease I didn't want anything too Big. I know we went from two single crochet decrease. This one's going to be four single crochet and a decrease. I know it seems odd, but I just wanted tiny little decreases at this point. So for the next six rows, <laughs> I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So that's my sixth row. I've been stuffing along the way. So that's your arm. We basically have one round left. Just to make the top a little bit smaller, we're going to do three single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 12 stitches. So you can fasten off. You'll need a whip stitching tail and a sewing tail. So I'll make sure you put enough filling in those. I don't like to overly go crazy. 
because my top is going to be closed. So, I'm going to need to explain a few things if you're going to sew some claws on later. So, I think I will do it now after I let you go to do the pattern. So, I'm just going to whip stitch this with you and then I'll explain what I'm going on about. So, <clears throat> this here that we just whip stitched will get sewn like this. So, the claws need to be here. Which means when you sew the claws on, you need to make sure your whip stitch is sideways. So, if your whip stitch is vertical, your claws can be sewn on here. But if it's horizontal, then you've screwed up. <laughs> so <laughs> don't have your whip stitch horizontal. Have it vertical when you sew the claws on. So I'm going to put the pattern up for the arm. Go ahead and make your second one and I'll meet you right back here and we'll get the leg done. So let's get into this leg here. It's sort of similar, but it's a little bit longer than the arms, but not by much. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Let's bring it up to 24 stitches. So, so far, everything's exactly the same. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So you should have 30 stitches for the next four rows. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So, so far, everything's still the same. So, that's my four rows. So, your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. 
this will bring it down to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. I'm going to start stuffing this. Try to stuff it kind of like the same size as your arm. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So you should have 18 stitches. For the next six rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So that's my six rows. So we're going to do this weird decrease again. We're going to do four single crochets and a decrease, bringing us down to 15 stitches. So again, all we're doing is, is taking it from decreasing six stitches to decreasing three stitches. So four single crochets and a decrease. So, for the next six rows, I'm going to want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. That's my six rows. So on our other arm, or our arm, um, this was the last row, three single crochets and a decrease. Um, this one here, the leg is a little bit longer, so this will not be our last row, but your next row will be three single crochets and a decrease. So, for the next three rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So my battery died, <laughs> and I didn't notice it died. So I've already fastened off and whip stitched it closed, but you guys know how to do that. Um, so let's sew on some claws if you have them. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it and then I'm going to put the pattern up for the leg so you can make your second piece. Um, but unlike the arms, let me grab a claw here. So the arms you have to make sure it's vertical and sew them on here. But the leg can be horizontal because it gets sewn like that. So the claws can be 
running the same as this here. So I'm going to show you how to sew some claws on, whether you have them now or not. It's, you know, a reference you can always go back and, and look at. But the arms and legs are going to be different. Just please make note of that. So um, make sure this is horizontal. And then count from literally your, your first row. Count back eight. And that's where your claw is going to go. So you need to do three. Because he's a three-toed sloth. And they get, like, literally this close together. Like that. And then we just kind of fold these down a bit, but they get sewn on the eighth row in that region. And then obviously with this running this way and your arm running this way, they'll get sewn on over here. So, and you can just do a regular, I mean, you can sew them on any way you want. But so that's, that's the idea um, of how to do it. So I'm going to put the pattern up and I'm just going to start sewing my stuff on. I'm going to put the pattern up for the leg, and I will meet you right back here. Now, I will add that after you've sewn the top part on, this sticks up. You have to sew down the claw to make it lay flat on the top here. So now that your other leg is done, um, I'm just going to show you what I do after my claws are sewn on. So these are my claws. Now they're sewn on like all the way down. Just the tips you can move. So all the way down to this row. And I meet up all in the same hole. And I first tie these two together. And then I pick another two and I tie those together. So my knots, my first knot is never tight. My second knot is tight. And then I weave all this down. And so go back down the same hole. And you really have to give it a yank to get that the knot's fairly big, but once it's in there, nobody's going to know it's in there. And then just weave like normal. And uh, there, your claws are nice and safe from any harm that might befell them. From children's little grubby fingers pulling or whatever. Little grubby fingers, you would think I didn't like kids, but I love children. Anyway, that's the leg, so you can sew on. Oh, I might have pulled <laughs> might have pulled that a little tight. So that's the leg. I haven't done my other one yet, but that's what that's gonna look like. And then the arm I already did the arm doing the same eight rows and then we, I had to make sure that's vertical, this end, because it gets sewn on like that. So um, let's sew all of our claws on, and then I'll meet you back, and we can sew the body parts on and do the tail, and then we're done. So I've got one of my arms sewn on. 
just so you can kind of see where it's going. So it's kind of diagonal. You can do whatever you want. Mine is diagonal. And I don't know, it's like a row down from a row down from the neck and I just did a whip stitch um, or a uh, mattress stitch sorry um, both sides I did I did one up here and then I did one underneath and I went down a little bit because um, your arm your arm will stay popped up <laughs> if you don't so So when I did it underneath, I kind of came out a bit from where the arm is, and then I went up another row on the arm. And then I still just tried to kind of keep it diagonal. But again, this is not telling you how to do it, this is just a reference if you needed a reference for how you know an idea of how to sew it on some people mistaken some of my suggestions as being telling them what to do you can do whatever you want I'm just making suggestions so when you pull that everything all comes together he's not gonna stand up because he has no legs so from here I went back into the arm corner and I pop, I'm going to pop out here and meet up with my straggler from my other arm because you know why. And then the legs. I did not go all the way under because I really wanted him to be able to kind of sit up and lean forward a little bit. So I'm just going to take a peek at my other one. So my other one, I, I don't know, I'm one, two, three, four, fifth row from the magic ring where I started to do a mattress stitch and I did a mattress stitch on both sides as well so I'm about here yeah that's about right I would say so you can sew them on any way you want whether you want them to be together or apart let me do mine apart I think a little bit so and then you can always just lean him forward or sew them on so that he's kind of always kind of sitting forward a little bit. I think I'll do that. It's completely up to you. So the last thing that we need to do is the tail for this guy and then we're going to be done. All right. So All right. Let's get this tail done and then we're done with the video. We're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets.
And your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around, just like we've been doing. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. And this is just so it looks like it has a decent point. It's not really pointed, but... Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. So, for the next six rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my six rows. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> my throat keeps trying to stop me from talking. <coughs> so that is it. We don't stuff it or anything. Um, you need just a whip stitching tail and a sewing tail. So I never stuffed it, but I mean, you can do whatever your little heart desires. I don't think I stuffed my other one. Let me check. I don't think I did. No, I didn't stuff that at all. So there's the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh row up for the magic ring, just so he can sit down without the tail getting in the way. So that's where I sewed it on. Somewhere around there, just make sure it's in the, in the middle. I'm gonna line it up with the magic ring on my head. I 
And again, I just did a mattress stitch. There. There we have it. So that's my tail. And that's my that's my guy. I think he's so cute. So there's our little guy. It's hard to get him in, but so thanks for joining me for this video. Don't forget if you're looking for certain parts, you can just go click in the description box below to find where you need to be in the video easy peasy and do all that click the like button and subscribe and share and all that fancy dancy stuff that uh, gets my name out there I'll see you guys in the next video